Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 22 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. We were doing some basic fundamental concepts in organic reaction mechanism in which we talked about homolytic and heterolytic cleavage. We talked about reaction mechanism and then I discussed nucleophiles and electrophiles. In this video, I'm going to solve three of your solved examples. I'm just going to explain them to you so that the, these concepts that we have done so far, they just solidify. So not wasting any time, let us come to the first question. The first question solved example is question 12.11 or 12.11. It's the 11th question of the 12th chapter solved example. The question reads, using the curved arrow notation, I told you that whenever we are discussing the movement of electrons, we use a curved arrow and the head of the arrow shows like a curved arrow. The head of the arrow shows the movement of the electrons and the tail shows where the electron moved from. And if you have two, I mean the head is like this having the total point of two lines, then it means it has two electrons. If one electron moves in one direction and the other moves in the other direction, then we show two half arrows, two half curved arrows or fish hook arrows to show the movement of uh, one electron each. So, in this you have to use the curved arrow notation to show the formation of reactive intermediates when the following covalent bonds undergo heterolytic cleavage. So we are going to show heterolytic cleavage. In heterolytic cleavage, we show a curved arrow, a total arrow. And in homolytic cleavage, we use the half arrows. So we have to show the using the arrows how heterolytic cleavage takes place and what are the species that are formed as a result of these. The bond that breaks is shown to you. The first part A is CH3 dash SCH3. So the bond is between carbon and sulfur that is breaking. Now in comparison to carbon, sulfur is more electronegative. Whenever you are doing heterolytic cleavage, it is electronegativity of the bonded atoms that has to be taken into consideration. The one that is more electronegative will pull the electrons towards itself. So Sulfur is electronegative in comparison to carbon. Therefore, the electrons would move from carbon to sulfur, which means the two electrons of this bond are going to move from the bond towards sulfur. As a result, what are the species that you that you'll get? So from this bonded bond, double bond, the electrons move here, or rather, let me just write this down again. So the first part A, you have CH3 S CH3. This is the bond. So the electrons move from the bond to sulfur and the arrowhead is here. So it shows the two electrons of the bond are moving from the bond towards sulfur. So the bond was actually one electron each contributed by carbon and sulfur and both these electrons are moving towards sulfur as a result of which what will happen? Sulfur takes back its own electron and it also takes the electron of carbon. So carbon becomes electron deficient. So the species that becomes electron deficient acquires a positive charge and the species that has an extra electron acquires a negative charge. So as a result of this heterolytic cleavage, what are the two uh, components or the two ions that you will be getting? You will get CH3 where carbon has a positive charge and you will get SCH3 where sulfur has a negative charge or you can say CH3 positive or CH3 is negative uh, where it would be understood where the negative charge or the positive charge is. The second is B. CH3 and the bond is between carbon and CN cyanide. Now both the atoms which are bound are carbon. So both of them have the same electronegativity. So yet it is heterolytic cleavage that is taking place. So what is going to cause the heterolytic cleavage? Which is going to act more electronegative? Both of them are carbons but this one is going to act more electronegative. The reason being that it is connected to nitrogen and due to inductive effect 
it the nitrogen that is present will pull the electrons between carbon and nitrogen towards itself thereby making this carbon slightly positive as a result of which the carbon will become electro negative it will become it will become deficient in electrons and if the bond breaks here it will have a tendency to pull the electrons towards itself so again the curved arrow would move towards this carbon and the products that you would get would be ch3 positive and cn negative the negative would be on the carbon right the third Hit, uh, product of heterolytic cleavage the compound that you have is CH3 again the bond is between carbon and copper copper is a metal it is electropositive in nature obviously it will push electrons away from itself and carbon in comparison to copper is electronegative therefore this time the arrow would point towards carbon away from copper so what do you get as a result of this you will get CH3 negative the negative would be on this carbon and plus CU would be positive. So these are the products that you will get as a result or these are the intermediate products that you would get as a result of heterolytic cleavage in these compounds. So using the curved arrow notation you were supposed to show the formation of reactive intermediates when the following covalent bonds undergo heterolytic cleavage and we showed that between carbon and sulfur sulfur was more, more electronegative therefore the electron moved here between c and cn the nitrogen made this carbon partially positive as a result of which the electron moved towards this carbon resulting in cn negative and ch3 positive and since copper is a metal it pushes the electron away from itself and the electrons move towards c of the ch3 thereby making copper positive and ch3 negative so we'll now do the next problem give me a moment all right so now this is question 12.12 or question 12. giving justification categorize the following molecules or ions as nucleophiles or electrophiles so let us revise what's a nucleophile a nucleophile is a nucleus loving species that is a species that loves positive charge who would love positive charge a nucleophile would be something that is which would love the nucleus or positive charge would either be negatively charged or it would have lone pair of electrons which can be donated electrons or unpaired electrons or unshared electrons which can be donated which are lone pairs of electrons so either a nucleophile is a species that is negatively charged or it is some a species that can donate a lone pair of electron and therefore it gets attracted to positive charge because it has the capability of providing electrons. Electrophile on the other hand is the opposite of it. That is electrophile, a nucleophile and an electrophile on the other hand is attracted to electrons. It means it is either positive charged, positively charged or it is has a sextet of electrons around this even if it is neutral its octet is not complete or we would say it is electron deficient it's electron deficient or it has a sextet of electrons only then if it has six electrons in order to complete the octet it can accept a pair of electrons so anything that donates a pair of electrons would be a nucleophile and anything that accepts a pair of electrons would be uh, an electrophile. So these are the species that are given to us and we have to categorize these into nucleophiles and electrophiles. So anything that's negatively charged, so nucleophiles, anything that is negatively charged, HS negative, HS negative would be nucleophile. So electrophiles. Right, let's categorize them. BF3, boron has three electrons in its outermost shell uh, and it forms BF3. It forms three bonds with three fluorines, so it has six electrons in its outermost shell. Three bond pairs and BF3 with three bond pairs, forming three bonds with three fluorines, it has six electrons. Therefore, it has a sextet of electrons. Therefore, BF3 would be an example of an electrophile. 
right the next is c to h5 o negative you must go into counting electrons only if the negative charge is not there negative charge is a sure shot hint that it's going to be a nucleophile so c2 h5 o negative would be a nucleophile then ch3 hole thrice n with a lone pair of electrons do you see this nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons that is a giveaway <laughs> that is your hint Lone pair of electrons again would be a nucleophile. Anything that is negatively charged or has a lone pair of electrons. So CH3 whole thrice N with a lone pair of electrons would also be a nucleophile. Next is Cl positive. Anything that's positively charged would be an electrophile. CH3 C positive O. This is CH3 C has a positive charge double bond O again would be an electrophile because of the positive charge here very easy to understand whenever you have a positive charge it means that it is it has to be an electrophile NH2 negative it has a negative charge so NH2 negative or oh, the N should be NH2 Nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons and it is negatively charged too. Therefore, it would be a, a nucleophile. And NO2 positive, the positive charge is a giveaway again. NO2 positive. It has a sextet of electrons. So all the electrophiles would have a sextet of electrons around the nucleophilic, uh, sorry, the electrophilic atom. And uh, in nucleophiles, they would all either be negatively charged species or they would have a lone pair of electrons that they can make available or that they can donate in the reaction. So this was question 12.12. Let us now move on to the next question. Now this is question 12.13 or 12.13. You have to identify the electrophilic center in the following compounds. CH3 CH double bond O, CH3 CN and CH3 I. Electrophilic would be something that is attracted to an electron. Therefore, it should have in the uh, molecule, it should have a partial positive character. So usually these electrophiles or nucleophiles would be formed as a result of heterolytic cleavage and the positive ion or the negative ion would be formed. So that atom which would form the positive ion, which would bear the positive uh, charge um, in the ions that are formed, that would be the electrophilic center. So let us see where is the polarity in these molecules and if there is polarity, which is the atom which is negative and the one that is attached to it would be partially positive and that would be your electrophilic center. So in order to do that, we must first uh, write down the molecules in such a way that you know where the bond is. The hydrogen is not bound to oxygen. You have CH3, CH3, or rather we should write if we are showing the bound atoms. CH3 is attached to carbon and the hydrogen is here and the double bond. So CHCO, the bonds are between, these two are carbon and carbon bonds. They have the same polarity. But the bond between carbon and oxygen, oxygen is more electronegative. So oxygen has a tendency to pull the electrons towards itself. Therefore, this would be partially negatively charged, while this carbon would be partially positively charged. And any species that would bear the positive charge, that would be the electrophilic center. So what would be the electrophilic center here? If you just wrote the CH again, here it is this carbon which would be the electrophilic center. For the next compound is CH3, CH3 and the bond is between CH3, C, triple bond, N. Again, these two carbons have a single bond, both of them are carbons. The uh, polarity difference or the electronegativity difference between would be between this carbon and nitrogen. Nitrogen being more electronegative would be partially negatively charged and this carbon would therefore acquire a positive charge. So this would act as the electrophilic center. So in this case, it is this carbon that is going to act as the electrophilic center. The next compound is CH3I. CH3I. The bond is between carbon and iodine. Iodine is a halogen, it is more electronegative, would attract electrons towards itself, so this would be partially negatively charged. They should be partially positively charged, therefore, the electrophilic center is this carbon. 
So in CH3I, this carbon is going to be the electrophilic center. Right? So we have identified the electrophilic center in the following compounds. With this, I will wrap up today's video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.